Good morning. My name is Jack Diebel, and I'm chairman of the CIP committee, uh, Town Aware. And today's the September 21st meeting. And uh, with that, we'll uh, introduce the CIP members. Tom Plow. Stu Richmond. Bob Ledger. Bruce Fillmore. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We have some stuff from the highway department. Yes, uh, before we do that, there is, <coughs> I did ask for a five years backward look and uh, at least a uh, five years forward look in terms of what our legacy long-term debt was, and they were back in the early 2011. Safety complex, Permonte property, bridge bond, and uh, then they kind of all uh, went by the wayside in uh, 2016. And then we pick up the DPW garage and we have a grader and an ambulance. So it gives an appreciation of <clears throat> what we've had for long-term and short-term debt and what it looks like going backwards from a historical standpoint and going forward. So thank you, Beth, for providing that. Do we have some uh, stuff from Benji? Yeah, that was the other stack. Is this right here? The whole stack. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Good. Um, he is not able to be here today? No. Okay. okay. Uh, Beth, you going to try and defend this or Naomi? No. Somebody off camera want to talk about this? Uh, well, let me. Why don't you let me try and muddle through it and you can help me out, okay? Okay, <clears throat> the last time uh, we had uh, DPW director, uh, Ben Knapp, he was here and he uh, had a couple things uh, that were still kind of evaluating. There is three items here which tend to be road, uh, which actually tend to be bridge oriented. Uh, on the red, the Hampshire, if you anybody wanted to go on the Hampshire Municipal Red Bridge list, and the key term is municipal, uh, there is there's 50 pages of all the towns in the, t in the state that have substandard bridges or culverts. Uh, a couple years ago, the Peasley Bridge uh, got taken off, and we still have on the Municipal Red Bridge list. This is where the state inspects bridges and culverts at some periodic basis, depending on the, uh, what they see. And uh, we have two. <coughs> this is Peacock Brook. Uh, both of them are because of Pe Peacock Brook. And one is on the Law Road Bridge Project, which is really a call bit, and, River and uh, Francis Town Road Bridge product Project. And these are large culverts. I think they're called what do they call them? Squash culverts. Squash culverts, which looks like an oval as opposed to a round. So it starts out at eight feet in diameter, and I think it's around six and a half feet tall and maybe like 10 feet wide. And these were installed in, I think, in 1973. And each one of these, let me just take a look real quick. You guys have that information? Uh, find this committee? You guys have the information? Yeah. Okay, it appears that to do each one of these large culverts, uh, they're both the same. And what year is the wall? I haven't got through there yet. This is for, we don't have a date on that, do we? Oh, 2021 is for the low road. And it's estimated, it's on. Uh, in 2021, $295,000, and my understanding is this is the gross number for doing the work, and if this stays on the red bridge list and the funding is there from the state, we will be liable for 25% of that, uh, for 20 of that, am I correct? Yes, and likewise, on the Francistown Road, uh, road bridge project, this goes out for 2022, and it's 295 in 2022, and again, that will be eligible for 80% paid by the state and 20% 20, 20 by the town. And when I spoke to Benji, these are budgetaries going out so we can put a number out there. Uh, 
there are some other uh, technologies rather than putting a culvert in. Uh, it could be a precast concrete or some other type of uh, material. And you'd be looking at that over the next couple of years to see where that technology matures for our use. So, <coughs> any Can questions on these two? I just have a question. Yes, sir. on the uh, Francis Town Road bridge on page two, it doesn't have a state contribution like it does on the uh, Low Road Bridge. I don't know if that's on there. Approved list. Uh, yeah. Well, no, it's not on. The, it's not on the state bridge aid. It, it is on the list, but it may be on it's the... It's on the list, but we haven't applied for bridge aid. I got it. Okay. So, it's, so it's Just because we haven't applied yet, essentially. Just because we haven't applied is why there's no match. Yeah. Okay. So, good catch, Tom. So, the low road sort of is baked into the plan for a 20% town, 80% state. Which is 59000 in the year. 59000 And the other one we expect to be put off, right? Uh, we fi well, we filled the application on Monday and it's going up okay. today. It's going to be scanned and sent today. Okay. Back over there for the River Road. Route. You got the River Road? No, we're okay. talking we're Francis Town. We haven't done anything with it right. okay. as, as of today. But, but the, the, in the but River the Road Bridge, we did fill out and sign an application Monday night and it's going over to be put in the queue for State Bridge. Okay. State. But the Francis Town. We did not do that yet. But you're intending to do it? In the future? I can. I mean, okay. I, I haven't done that. We haven't talked about that yet. Okay. Because that's far out at this point. Alrighty then. Any questions? Anybody on this? Uh, now the heavy hitter. Um, <coughs> just a little background. <coughs> <coughs> I think the town has signed a contract. We did for the repair? Yes. Do you want me to speak on that? You want to speak? to that okay. kind of bring us up to speed yep. <coughs> on Monday night um, we had we had received five bids for fixing the doing the fix and as part of the fix we asked for itemized because um, there's some things that we didn't have to do or to do right away which was the sandblasting and the painting of the entire deck so after you funneled it down uh, Mike Hansen construction was the lowest one um, and he's going to get started um, I got to call him back he called me yesterday he wants to order the steel so he's going to get started so what we did is we approved basically a repair um, it doesn't take us off the critical list it just raised basically it's re taking the weight limit off so that you know our 10 wheelers can go through it in the winter um, and everything else <coughs> can be so we spent, um, we approved $61,050 to make the necessary repairs to remove the weight limit. That doesn't take us off the list, as I said. So our anticipation at the same time um, in speaking with DOT is, and they've been through this since we were, were not on the list, we became a critical deficiency. We've met with them right along so she understands what we're up against. Um, she's working, they're willing to work with us and kind of we offered to shuff out Lull because Lull's in the queue <coughs> earlier. And we filled out the Bridge Aid application Monday night, signed it, and it's going to her today to get us started on that. And what that does is basically it's an application to have somebody come out and look at the bridge, which they've been out quite a bit. <coughs> and then it goes to the next step with a like a price, an estimated price of what the repair would cost. And that's how you get a number to get <coughs> moving with. At that point, you start your engineering. Or, sure. But what happens is, just to let you know, things get shuffled, the deck gets shuffled all the time. So when, when you put a, a project on, then all of a sudden, town meeting doesn't appropriate your 20%. <coughs> you have to tell that to DOT, DOT put you out till next year you try again but she's constantly shuffling the deck because your money has to be in place you know um, to be able to have them get you started so we're looking at a million and a half which we would have to come up with three hundred thousand dollars as a town out of you know that's the twenty percent the sixty thousand you mentioned is basically going to be done in a 
current year? And it's going to be done this year. It'll be done hopefully by the first week, possibly second week <coughs> of December, depends <coughs> on because um, the steel is going to be ordered and the steel is going to go to Mike Hansen's shop. He's going to do the cutting and the fabricating and actually he's going to do some painting of the ends and the drill holes so that, you know, stuff can't get in there. Um, and then he'll bring everything to the site. There's going to be some traffic control. We're going to have to work with, you know, the schools and all that because I think we can go down to one lane, but we're not 100% sure. How long do you think they're going to be kind of in this one lane deal? Possibly a couple of weeks, he said. So it's just a matter of working with everybody and just letting them know. It's going to be open at night. Nothing's going to be any different. It's just when they're trying to put the new strips underneath. So okay. just just for the purpose there is a request for a river road bridge project in 2018 right you think we're going to be able to turn it around in time we get the matching funds the, i mean we guessing at that you asked us to kind of put where we'd well, like to put it if if i mean just open for discussion if this bridge fix mm -hmm. is intended to be a five-year fix correct I mean, it may last four it may last mm -hmm. six but the intention is before something else rots out enough to True. degrade the bridge. Why wouldn't we put this 150 request like out to 2020? I think the thought is maybe it's to start putting some money away and not do it all in one year. Well, I think you can still put it in 2020, but... Put 2020 would be pushing to the end, though. 2020 would be four years. And if it's only a five-year fix, you're going to hope in four years that we have the money. Okay. Well, <clears throat> That's just, okay I guess that's what I thought was. I just thought that maybe you'd put it out the year you'd actually want to do it. Now, it doesn't preclude you from putting $100,000 right. away a year right. to get there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to quibble on that. No, but, and I think that was Ben's <coughs> thought is maybe we could, right. you know, because we don't want to wait for year four and say, well, we got a five-year fix and next year's done. You know, I don't want to be standing here doing the same thing in four years. Maybe, maybe we would like to annotate a, an objective of putting 75 or 100,000 yeah. in a bridge fund yeah. so that our matching fund would be there yeah. or almost be there mm -hmm. whether it's 100,000 or yeah. 75,000 for 40. And it's also going to I mean dictate if if people in <coughs> 17 pass all their articles we may be bumped anyway. Okay. Right. I kind of got a question about how this works. Um, first thing that needs to happen when we build a bridge obviously is we need to come up with the plans. Does paying the engineering firm for the plans go towards our 20%? Yep. <clears throat> and how much is that typically of the budget? 100000 It's probably about 100000 It's probably about a third of it, Bruce. Okay. And then there's ongoing inspection once the bridge is done. Yeah. But I'm, you know, he has to be out there and he has to do a lot of things. But, well, I guess I'm kind of thinking along the lines of Jackson, and maybe I don't know if this is a reasonable <clears throat> to... Um, Having for the first year, whether it be this coming year or next year, money for the engineering for the plans, <clears throat> and kind of take it that that way we can break it up a little bit, so well, that by the time three four years come, we're all ready to go. We can you know the plant the engineering is all done. But we do have a bridge capital reserve. Right not with my, not there's not much left in it. But we still have it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we used so, it the other night. So if we wanted to, we could refresh that to a hundred thousand dollars. And make it such that it can be used for engineering. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we do it, but that's kind of like what we want to do. I think we'd have to look closely at the definition of the fund we have because it's a maintenance or repair fund. I think it's improved. Not a too. bridge replacement fund. So yeah. whether or not. It, okay. it but you could open up a capital reserve right. for bridge We could establish right. one for bridge Yeah, because we got three bridges now that we're going to need to yeah. work towards. So, so a couple of questions. Here. Yeah. The, first of all, I thought Low Road was already on the <coughs> list for yeah, it is. Of yeah, it is. And um, it's in 17. And if we want to, I just, I didn't throw that out there because I need to ask Tom Marshall if he's ready to start engineering for this because typically we could swap places with Lull. Lull's on for 17. So that means you have to get started before June 30th of 17 because you have to do it in the state's fiscal year of 17, which is. July 1st to June 30th. <coughs> so what you're going to do is you have to get started and start expending money on that. So if we swap places, um, <coughs> we haven't gotten to that point. We could swap places if he's ready to start engineering the River Road Bridge and there's enough people shuffled out 
that we could put River Road there, but then we don't have three hundred thousand dollars either. See, that's kind of that's a lot of pieces to the yeah, puzzle. I, I think I think that these requests are reasonable. Sure. For satisfying the CIP, mm -hmm. the strategy of accomplishing that. Right. I think we're going to have to have a somebody's going to have to develop a, a view graph with a flow chart, mm -hmm. sort of like what we did before right. on these other bond issues. We're trying mm -hmm. to figure out, you know, the ro the roads and how we did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you know, I don't know if you, if you want to show a creation of a bridge replacement and put any monies that you want to have in advance of the engineering into that fund, just to know as long as you know the accounting, what's in there for what. Uh, you could ask for uh, establishment of the fund this year <coughs> and funding a certain percentage <coughs> excuse me, this year. I mean, that's a strategy of how to pull it off. Right. And <coughs> I think it would be beneficial for whether it's Benji, you, me, or whoever else to help mature that when I go pitch this. Mm -hmm. We need to have a good story. Uh, well, I intend story. to have a great story at that point, right. but um, my what we can do is we have to come up with, out of the 295 we've been approved for, we have to come up with 59. So at that point, that leaves you 240,000 bucks. Right. So that 240,000, if we can swap places, I only have to come up with 60 and finish the river road. See what I'm saying? So 295 has been approved with a 20% match. Right. So 295, I'm just looking round figures, but. Where's that 60,000? Is that the. 295 is, this 59,000 is our 20% match. Of 295. What's the river road involved in this? No, if I swap places. Time frame places. It's time frame. I don't know how I gotta have a conversation with the state, and I yeah, don't I just want to understand you, something. But I have to have a conversation with Nancy Mayville first. You're not gonna use any of that 295 from, well, from Low Road to do anything to River Road in the near But term. we're earmarked for the Low Road, so we could take what we have in the kitty. Right. Because what happens is DOT makes a final <coughs> list, and this is how much they have to that. give out. And not so, where's allotted for two hundred and forty thousand dollars for this bridge? Not to be confused with the sixty thousand to the near term. Fix. Right. Right. Okay, I got it. And that's right. The numbers are too close. Right. That's why. But I, I think a, a scheme needs to be because as Thomas, <coughs> like the two ninety five, and you use the numbers in round figures, but that bridge is way more than two ninety five. You know what I mean? It's a million five. Right. So it, there's a lot of moving pieces, and right. we haven't <coughs> sat down with Nancy Mayville again since we did. And they were very supportive and very helpful to get us, to allow us to get moved out and moved in. I just don't know the whole story yet. Okay. But so we'll have a good story by October. Right. I think the important thing is we've got the rough numbers, mm -hmm. budgetaries. Right. And this 150, <clears throat> I mean, this bridge engineer, what's his name, Marshall? Tom Marshall. Tom yeah, Marshall. From Kleinfelder. Last year for Tim, he did. Um, <coughs> excuse me. He did a. He did an estimate for replacing the steel on the deck and the deck. Right. Six hundred thousand. That assumes that everything else is still good enough mm -hmm. to be reused. Right. And assuming that DES and the EPA do not change the mm -hmm. design criteria for the concrete abutments, which appears that maybe some significant changes. So. That goes from being a bridge repair to being a bridge replacement. Right. And the logic was Peasley, which we have a lot of you know, experience on, about one point two million. It's gonna be at least a Peasley. And maybe twenty five percent more or so. So mm -hmm. which is kinda of where you use the one point five. A placeholder yeah. and that's nothing more than a placeholder that's one point five. Right. Which we're liable for three hundred. And I think once we shuffle it all right. down and get DOTs by <coughs> in we'll have a better idea of where we are, but I mean, everybody's kind of got their idea of how it works, but until I get, you know, Nancy's who you have to talk with. So, you know, until I get a chance to sit down with Nancy and Tom Marshall, I don't know where the shuffle will sure. occur. We're hoping it's going to be that way. I would have yeah, a suggestion that we look at the two together, and the town has to come up with, uh, you know, about 60000 for the 
Ball Road Bridge, and about <coughs> 300,000 for the River Road Bridge. If we looked at River Road Bridge for 2020, and I know not necessarily sure, do sure. that, yep. and the Lull Road Bridge get going on it right away, you know, divide that by four and, sure. and establish a fund for it, and it would be somewhere in probably like the $85,000 range it would be asking for over each of the four years. So it would spread out the tax impact, but we'd have our money uh, for the town share without some whopping big $300,000 warrant article. I'm thinking go an extra year and add in the uh, Francistown Road one, too, <coughs> which would bring it down a little bit because it's only 60000 for matching. might bring it down Yeah, we haven't, we haven't gotten in that. No, no, yet, but I'm, so. I'm just, by the time we get to that point, okay. I think the Francistown Road one, we need to be addressed. So um, you're all three as a package. About a hundred thousand a year. Almost. No, if you so if you add a year on, because the Francis town, you know, instead of the four year, five year for the four sixty or whatever the hell, it, whatever it works out to be. So what we're discussing is a strategy, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. really the town's business of how they. Well, it's that, and we have to work in conjunction with the state. Correct. <clears throat> they run the. They actually have more. So where we stand now, are people kind of comfortable with? The request, which are reasonably representative of what needs to be done, and the strategy be matured, and uh, somewhere between now and October, and probably open up a capital reserve for bridge repair, bridge replacement, and notionally fund around a hundred thousand for three, <coughs> four years. Just around, a strategy yeah, goal. Just goals. a strategy yeah. goal. So, okay. I think regardless, <coughs> um, I, you know, I. I I'm an advocate of saving, but um, I think that's to spread the impact, and we should do something this year to look forward. You know, I hate to be reactive. I want to be proactive, and that's kind of how we should look at We know we have three things on the table. How we shuffle the deck and we pick up what's under what is another thing. Somewhere in there is a miracle going to happen. Right, we'll pick up the cover and have a miracle or something, just like shuffling the eggs. <laughs> you folks from the Finance Committee have any uh, questions you need to have answered regarding? Do you understand what the intent is? I'll have, you know, I guess um, <coughs> bottom line is in the next time when we finalize things, I may just, I'll have the conversation and we'll know what we're up to by the time we have to finalize and package it together. Because I haven't had a chance to sit down with Tom and Nancy. Because I think that's where we have to go next. Okay. The other handout we got is an update of hours and miles on trucks, just so we have a schedule updated. And I'm going to draw a line through. Uh, is it T14, T1 on the second page? Is that? Everything below the line of T14, is that all recyclable? Or is there something in there that needs to be included? <clears throat> I mean, the transfer station. On the second page, T1 and below. I think T14 is transfer station too, isn't it? That's that truck they use for moving stuff around. T14, yeah. okay. But also, isn't there some other equipment like that little um, skid steer? Doesn't that belong down below the line? Yeah. yeah, he just separated it, trucks on one page, equipment on the other. Both <coughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sense. So T1 through 4 and below is, T14 below is transfer, right? Um, Kind of. You've still got the backhoe right. and the skid steer up above right. Jack. Okay, so I'm just trying to get this. So, uh, Well, back always says the majority is used on the, on the road. So skid steer is dedicated. So this is transfer. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other business this morning? Uh, I believe the chief, when he left here, the fire chief, <coughs> he had four options. Right. <coughs> and we discussed with him option number four, which was buying the reconditioned equipment instead of 225 225,000 for new it's a hundred thousand for reconditioning and that includes new masks and anything uh, and any repairs to the harness is required and I did ask um, our member here uh, 
Steve Roberts. Uh, he did talk to the chief again and the Board of Fire Awards did confirm they want to go for the 100000 so we'll ask him to modify his request for that. <coughs> And I don't know what the status of anybody else is. Uh, I think the, uh, I don't know what the chief, fire, uh, police chief, if he wishes to continue his, his three cars uh, request. I haven't heard anything different. been some discussion, but. <coughs> and Parks and Rec, <coughs> we're expecting them to be back today, but we don't see them. Wait for Naomi to find out what the deal is. I called um, Betty Straub, who just chairs the Northern Hall, um, to try to sort out <coughs> what was going on there. Because if you remember when Karen was in, she said that uh, they wanted a request directly from the town rather than from the Hawks and Rec. But it gets kind of convoluted in a way because it, it hasn't gotten to the selectmen yet. Right. So we can't, it's kind of like we're proposing <coughs> something before it ever goes through yeah. the CIP if we make a request. But uh, what we talked about on Monday night was perhaps writing a letter for the Pox and Rec to say that it's okay with the selectmen if they ask which doesn't necessarily mean that we're up front <coughs> jumping the gun on the process, but that we we, we support their their ability to request their funds. Now, so why is, I mean, we discussed this last time, why is it that the selectmen have to do it and the and they cannot? Who that, that, that was my question. No, who made the rule? Because I'm not aware of that yeah. being. Because you want to be in a judgment position right. as opposed to a requesting position. Well, it, it's just that they're in a unique situation because up till this point, the most of the of the requests to the Mildred Hall Trust for right. spending out of the uh, <coughs> Eastman Fund uh, have been uh, through different land organizations, PLC, the New Hampshire Forest uh, Protection Society, so forth. They haven't been directly from uh, a town group. Yes, they have. I did an eighty-five thousand dollar one for the cemetery out of the cemetery, which came through the cemetery trust. Is that who made that request? I guess I technically did on behalf of the land. Of to eighty-five was going to come out of Cypress, which is a cemetery fund. And 85 was going to come out with the Mildred Hall fund. And I did everything myself for Jock Brown. I worked as Jock's, Jock Brown's agent to get that $85,000 from the, uh, out of the uh, Mildred Hall. And they approved it. Uh, it requires a one page application. And they basically prove it. If there's no matching funds, it doesn't go any further because you can't do the job for half the money. They want to be in half the money. So, Maybe I broke the rule, but well, you know, I, the, <coughs> I, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. It's just that, that the selectmen have to approve a request from the Mildred Hall Trust. That's why I'm saying I don't think the selectmen should be in a position to both ask and approve themselves. See, and that's what that was my point of the, of the conversation, but. Uh, <coughs> You know, Betty's going to do a little more research on it, she said, and, and get back to me uh, after talking to other members of the group. Um, but does it the, um, does it the Conservation Commission make requests for a land matching funds? From uh, according to, and you know, I asked that of Steve Dejar uh, when he was here for another reason on Monday night, and he said actually they haven't, and usually that has been either the Forest Society or PLC, who's made the actual request. They uh, put money into it, for example. They may maybe say, okay, $20,000 <coughs> of this request is going to come from the, uh, the uh, Conservation Commission's fund. Uh, we're asking for X number of dollars from Mildred Hall. 
and then there are others that they pull in in order to get the money they need. But uh, according to Steve, they haven't <coughs> made a direct request. Well, I guess I'm the only person that's not a formal organization. But I did it on behalf of Jock Brown, and they took it from me. I had Jock's signature on it, my signature as, as sort of an agent. So. But it was in coordination with the this, this cemetery trustees. Well, they had their separate money. Cemetery <coughs> trustees had their Cypre money, which required the Attorney General Charitable Trust to approve the removal of Cypre money for purchase of land. And I got the other half from uh, Mildred Hall. And I was the agent for that mm -hmm. on behalf of the landowner. So I don't know. I mean, it still, though, it sort of verifies what you're saying. It wasn't the selectman asking. Oh, no, I don't think the selectman should be in the business of asking. No. They should be in the business of approving. Right. <coughs> well, I guess I guess the question of the CIP is, we will, if we have a reasonable offer you know, presented to us, then it has to be viable, and we need to have some kind of a, a commitment letter from the, uh, from uh, Mildred Hall, if the fund's coming, I don't care if it's a the or if it's from whoever wants to do it. I mean, because we shouldn't go forwards asking for 100000 to be uh, raised, I guess, and isn't appropriate on the fifth. So somebody's got to get some kind of a document. Right. Because if not, we got half the thing done. Let's say the selectmen say, we'll give our 50 for them. But where's the other half, and why raise the 50 if you don't have a commitment? The other thing uh, <coughs> Betty put into the discussion, and this wasn't any individual point of view, but there are various tests, uh, points of view on the committee. Right. And to go back and look at the terms of the uh, request of the town, because it did state to benefit the town as a whole, and their question there was, you know, uh, <coughs> does this meet that criteria? Well, here's the question. It was proffered to us last week, or whenever we met, two weeks ago, that they had approved this. Okay, so have they approved it? Are they still evaluating it or understanding no, it? it? It hasn't been approved. Huh? The Mildred Hall Trust? Yeah. No, they haven't. Well, it was kind of said in the meeting. I took it as being they well, approved. No, she went there. She had a letter. That letter she had essentially said that it wasn't. It maybe is not really approved, but maybe approved. I don't know. I'm just trying to clarify. She came. In, I mean, the uh, the department uh, Fox and Rex came in and said, "Here's a letter from Middle Hall. We got this half. We're going to ask the town for this half, and we'll have a hundred thousand do the job." So the real question is: Are we questioning whether they really? Have signed on to this? No, they they haven't. No, I think what I think they went to them with the and then there was questions <coughs> raised as to, um, okay. you know, the whole thing and the deed and the whole thing. So and then also <coughs> they wanted the selectmen to apply or okay. something like that. It wasn't. Let me make this real simple. And I think it's off the table for this year. Anyway. Well, yeah, but if they want to bring it in for this year or next year, they should have a letter of commitment. From Mildred Hall, if they're sure. if they're asking for matching funds, right. and we don't have one, so it's kind of like you say, kind of off this year. Did you? Is that official? No, it's not official, but I think um, I there's the a test. lot of things she's got to ch chase, and part of it is <coughs> you know the deed and the, right. the ownership and the selectman right. giving her okay to go to Mildred Hall, and there was things that she needed to do. <coughs> Well, but I don't think I don't think it's off the table. But I I get the opinion Monday that she wasn't going to bring it back this year. Okay. But she was discouraged with things. Right now it's closed because we haven't met the minimal need of understanding what the request is. We don't have we don't have a commitment from Mildred Hall, and we don't have a description. I didn't, of I didn't see the letter. It got passed around the table. I don't know what it said. Right now, in front of this table, right now, we don't have it. If there is such a thing, somebody ought to produce it. And you don't have the boat ramp thing, which I thought well, was Well, and, and a shoreline reconstruction. That, I think, is all. Right. The permits so, are going to take a year as to get stands right now, we don't have anything for Cox and Rick. Well, I believe that she met with a concrete guy and about the ramp. I just I don't have anything to okay. check. 
but we don't have anything right now. No, no. we're at zero. Okay. <clears throat> so when do when will we entertain? When's the latest we can entertain her request as a board? I mean, today. You, well, I think I'm just gonna throw this out there. If you had to entertain her on the fifth in the morning before you did your whiteboard, that would be the end. Okay. I, mean, I just, think it's going to be short and whatever right. she's got. Why don't we just do I think right, he's right on the short line. It's going to take right. a long time for permitting. So, why don't we just ask her to come in, uh, so, sort of like something in the bag in the form of tennis court. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't have to go ask the selectman, per se. She, if she's going to offer Mildred Hall funds, she needs to have a letter of commitment or still a fictitious request at this point. So... I mean, the selectman just uh, throw another wrench into that time frame. Uh, oh, the one they do. Yeah, they don't meet before the fifth of October. At the Who's that? Builder Hall. Builder Hall. Maybe they don't meet before that, so she wouldn't be able to have a letter of commitment before the fifth of October. Uh, it isn't my saying. request. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to accommodate right. a request. So, if she, if she, um, would you be interested in putting some money away? For reconstruction, because there is a capital reserve for tennis court reconstruction. Well, reconstruction, yeah. You know what I mean? There is one that's got very little money in it, but. But I got to tell you, yeah, we know bridges are going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I can understand that and take that as a flyer. Yeah. So to speak. This, that, it, the big hurdle, I think, is. Getting the town to do 100%, which is $100,000, <coughs> I'm not sure anybody's going to sign up for that. They may consider doing half, which is, but they have to get some form of commitment from Mildred Hall. So right now, I put it that we have no request out of Pax for today. For today. Yeah. And if they can get something, because at the end of the day, the selectman is going to decide whether they want to put this on the one. We don't. We don't decide that. We are offering them uh, department department heads requests, mm -hmm. and our job is kind of scrub them to make sure they're you know make sense and they hold together. I don't want to take <coughs> the location out of the discussion either, which might put it off further because uh, you know a repair is one thing. You leave it there and you repair it. If you're going to totally rebuild it, I think that discussion of location mm -hmm. should come in. Uh, and I, I brought that up on Monday too. Uh, and where we do have other athletic complexes in town where that might fit, uh, I think we at least should look at it. Uh, where we've had a lot of uh, background discussion about library expansion over the last few years. And, uh, you know, that, that space could be used for either construction or parking or, <coughs> or for the library if the tennis court were removed. Right. But weren't there some conditions in the deed? We haven't seen it, so. Yeah, that's a, you see, that's why it's not a hurry up thing. It has to be looked at that. But you do have to get, according to Karen, Monday night, you do have to get permission from, I think, the Department of Interior. To, to do something with it because it was federal money, but it, to me, it, it uh, I can't believe that if you're just placing it someplace else with. Uh, I can believe it'd be facility. illegal, but I can't believe anybody ever track you down. <laughs> 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 I can believe anything that's illegal from the federal <laughs> government. The question is, would they ever find it out? Yeah, well, it's hard to hide a tennis course. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this, you, you bring up a bigger issue. There is the Schmidt property, which the gravel banks, not the nice fields, but the gravel banks across from Bill, was intended once they do an incremental graveling and re reclaim that, the intent was to put that in the form of a usable field. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, it's not there now because it's kind of like a bank of gravel. But in five years, there may be on the reclamation, the first ball field, the foot, football, the soccer field, whatever it is, and they should there should be a there should be a plan to get that done, and this may want to go into that plan. Maybe there, or even uh, 
front part of the property where the Ineson Field is. That's who? Ineson Field on Clayton oh. Street. That's pretty sure. close to the center. Oh, Salmon. Salmon down in the East. Yeah, there's a lot of issues with that. I know it's a dump. It is a dump. <laughs> it was a dump. There isn't that much land up there. What's that? I'm not sure how much there is beyond. Uh, there's an area down the behind the border that was set up. I don't know. We had a temporary skateboard park up there for you. We're not adding any value to the parks and rec request at this point. I'd like to move on and say they have an opportunity on the 5th to come back and tell us what their sure. plan is. At this point, uh, Chief hurried back. We, we, the chief has uh, showed up, and uh, we've got our member who is kind of like knowledgeable of the chief's request. So, <laughs> I, I guess Bob, I just want to make sure that when you were here the other day, he's We didn't want to, you know, ramroad, ram you into something you didn't feel comfortable with. You did kind of say that option four, the hundred K, uh, was acceptable. If you want to speak to that. Come on up. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> um, I mean, we talked at length today. This request um, mirrors that discussion. Sure. Thank you. Where we uh, looked at the refurbishment option. <coughs> Uh, which reduces our potential request by more than uh, to replace. <coughs> do we want to? I don't know how far back you want to go. Our air bottles are running out of end of life. They're central, um, mm -hmm. so they need to be replaced. The discussion really was: Do we continue down the same road that we're you know, on? Which I don't think there's anyone that likes that idea. Certainly inside the department. Um, so, if we were going to switch gears, um, we really had four options, which was which was purchase new, uh, phase that purchase in over time, just buy bottles, which is the least <coughs> on, on lowest on our priority, and, or to go the refurbished route. I think the refurbished route uh, acknowledges that um, it's a critical piece of equipment for us. Uh, we can't be in business without them. Um, but it also balances uh, the cost of that equipment new versus how the frequency that we would use that. And, and so I think that we end up with a dependable, um, a dependable piece of equipment uh, that's more consistent with what other communities are doing around us. Um, at a price point that's probably roughly 40 to 50 percent of the. Now, your ability to actually have repurposed available to you is sort of a chance on if somebody turned on equipment that can be repurposed. Do you think it's fairly probable that you're going to be able to execute that? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, in so uh, 100,000, um, I just ran the numbers real briefly before I came back here just to make sure that that is the number and, and that, should be, uh, that should be a reasonable number for us to move forward. With that. So the elevator speech is 26 packs of 52 bottles. Yep, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yep. I see um, the first one, the initial request, it was a lease thing over five years. Yep. <coughs> It's not here, but you would mention previously that it's not. Is it this coming year, seven, 17, that the bottles all expire? No, the um, the bottles expire in nineteen. Okay. 19, uh, I was just the reason I'm asking is I didn't know if you yeah. could do like fifty thousand for seventeen or fifty thousand for eighteen. Yeah, but the point is, you really want to make sure that. All that it all happens, huh? All, all well, consistent. Yeah, yeah. That, and, and that's the, the point um, that Jack just made was we would like to get all the same model 
for consistency across the department. For swappability and all yep. that. Yeah. Um, we, <clears throat> so that's the, that's the goal, whether we buy new or we don't buy new. Um, even by buying new, if we phase that in over a three-year purchase cycle, which is really why the request got here this year, um, we run the risk that there'll be some minor changes to that equipment over three years that that final purchase will look like the same model. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of an all or nothing, I think, is the best bet to get exactly what we want. I think Tom brought up a good point, uh, which I frankly hadn't thought about was um, like the like the ambulance purchase that we just made is could we not go to a lending institution of some sort and um, and get a, a two or a three year note for that purchase that lowers that per year cost um, so it's a little more palatable um, but we're able to purchase all at once. But the town ought to decide. But that's a select Right. Yeah. That's why I'm saying the town ought to decide what a reasonable number for yearly purchases and those things you would stretch. Like, so I don't know. The thing I think in general we ought to keep in mind that not everything that comes in as a request is an add-on from previous tax right. bills because, you know, things that were on last year's have been paid for uh, and uh, it's not necessarily, you know, well, if we get these, we're going to add $100,000 in a tax request because it balances off some of the things that have already been paid for. Sure. Uh, I, would, I would say that something $100,000 or less, uh, we should probably stay away from financing. It's when you get beyond that point in the total cost. <coughs> That's my feeling personally. Uh, for the same reason, because we've got things that come upon us as uh, surprises, like that River Road Bridge, that we sat down to look at, and that's going to require, uh, you know, some pretty substantial financing, probably spread over years. Um, so, and, and that and that's certainly a decision. I think that could be put off the how we're going to pay for it piece. Um, until we get closer to the to the town vote, or at least whatever the drop dead date is for getting it onto the water. Um, as things become more clear. And everything else is going on the warrant. Yeah, what's going on with the warrant, um, what other revenue streams may or may not be available, uh, you know, those types of things. Um, Chief, on, um, on the question, I know your crystal ball, like mine, is kind of hazy, but you're not going to be buying extra ones of these in the foreseeable future because your number of ambulances may not increase on the number of vehicles. So I don't, I don't, uh, as crystal clear as it can be, sure. we're not intending to increase the number of SCBA units that we have across the department. Uh, honestly, we would have a very um, serious discussion as to, you know, is is 25 too many. Um, and, and looking at that number and is that number and the other you make that number smaller mm -hmm. realistically um, you know some of those because right now we're we're essentially putting a breathing apparatus into replacing one for one with the stock that we have now uh, that is more or less one unit for each riding position which is the typical uh, methodology that's used uh, we could go back and look at that I was on that. My, my question was, there's, it's sort of like the roads in town. We have so many trucks to go so many miles of road. Unless we increase a significant number of roads, we're not going to need another, another incremental truck. So nope. like you, unless you, in, by demand or whatever, you increase the number of vehicles, you pro uh, but that I don't see that in the future, so you're pretty much going to stay you're not going to be adding five more in five years. No, um, right. I would say that our major apparatus uh, fleet um, is only going to get smaller as we go forward okay. versus larger. Then the other question I've got is, how long are these good for? Are we taking this off the table for like 15 years? We're Under this plan, which is to purchase a new bottle with the right. refurbished units, right. this, take, this kicks that can down the road 15 years. 
Um, and it's still, um, I think by, by going this route, we're still having a unit that um, may be attractive, doesn't necessarily hurt us in future grant applications. Um, whereas if we were to buy brand new this year, I, that's, I don't think anyone's going to even look at us for 50 years. Okay. Um, so I, I think that there's still some grant potential <coughs> in the future. Um, as I stated last time, we applied for two grants, for one grant over two years, um, and, and didn't receive either one. <coughs> so um, I, I think that at the moment is exhausted. Uh, we also had a pretty extensive discussion on the packs that we have in 2003, correct, Chief, currently? Yep. And there was a lot of technology changes um, to improve safety and reliability <coughs> in the early 2000s up to about 2007. The valve and the pressure. Well, there's, there's, a, there's what they call a heads-up display where you can actually read your bottle pressure inside your mask instead of having to find your regulator and try to get it up there. And if you're in low visibility, sometimes you, you couldn't see it. So this, uh, the, uh, the emergency pass alarms went year, years ago integral into the packs. They used to be extra when they first came out. So you had to remember to turn those on. Now they automatically turn on when you turn your bottle on. So a lot of those technology changes kind of peaked about 2007. Well, 2002, there was a major change, uh, which is what our PACs currently are. Um, 2007 was the next revision. There wasn't a substantial technology change to that point, and, and it's my opinion that there hasn't been any substantial technological change since then. Um, there's been some minor tweaking and things like that. Um, so I don't believe that we're, we're certainly not taking a step backwards. Um, and I think by going any newer, we're not really, for the difference between new and this request is about a hundred and a quarter. I don't think there's $125,000 worth of technological advancement in, okay. since 2007. Anything else for the chief? Thank you very much, Bob. Right. And we're all set on the, uh, who's the other one? The repeater one? Is the electrification? I think that's this year, is it? We reviewed it. Okay. And now, I hate to open this up. Let me ask you. Okay, question. we don't have to. Your electrification <coughs> is for seven of the ten. There's three are already electrified through stations. And Correct. Okay. And of the seven, <coughs> you're going to electrify not only the fire, but also the police side as well. It benefits both. Right. And on top of that, you're not only going to electrify it off public service, you're also going to have the backup ability of the solar and the batteries. Yes. And that's all wrapped into your maintenance going forward. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay. really we just have the, um, we have the, the capital cost that's mm -hmm. in this document, uh, and then there would be a recurring. Right. But that goes in the operating budget. That's an operating budget. budget. What is the recurring? Do you, you know what? I, I didn't do the math um, on that since we last Because there is a meter charge. Yeah. I don't know if it's <clears throat> the I know that East Square Fire Station, which consumes more electricity than the units would, or is about 35 a month. Right, because the so meter charge it, is 12 it's not 95. It's not going to be more than that. Right. So. Well, I guess we've um, exhausted our <laughs> questions. Excellent. I'm sure we have other questions, Time but they're not relevant. Time for donor selection. Are you guys have any questions for the chief? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Taste makes waste. <laughs> okay. Are we? Are we? Uh, are we done? I think so. Oh. I believe you are done. <laughs> So the fifth, uh, October fifth is your next. Meeting. He doesn't know what the whiteboard exercise, but basically every request <coughs> gets put up on, on that board right there, and we basically uh, rank them on the departments, which shouldn't be a big deal because there's very few mm -hmm. requests this year, and we kind of this is sort of the machine, sort of the material that Naomi and I kind of create this package of. 
this presentation. Yeah. And this will be what I, at some point, planning board, board of selectmen or finance, depending on the order I can get there. Everybody's welcome to come. Um, we will email out the package for people's uh, viewing pleasure, and uh, we'll go from there. So I think we've hit everybody once. Uh, nothing from uh, cemeteries. So I, I think we're done. I, I don't think any. Between the side frame money, which is in, inside, I think I think they're they're in good shape. <coughs> they finished up a few things. Wow. I guess we're done. Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Oh, Discussion. Yeah. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Extensions.